the uh, Mari Povich uh, meme where he uh, he's on his talk show reading the results of a test and at the top of the meme it said the name the name of Jesus uh, has power or something to that effect or there's power in the name of Jesus and then at the bottom where he's reading his results it says the current state of the black community over the last 400 years proves that this statement is false uh, and a couple people got really offended by that but you must understand that I'm not insulting your religion I'm not insulting Jesus because the name Jesus is totally made up and fake uh, and this is a you know some of the things that we run into when, when I'm dealing with people who claim to have a lot of knowledge about things but then when I ask them simple questions like how did the name Jesus come to be uh, because clearly if you read the Hebrew version of the Bible and go into some of the original text you discover that the name of the person that they're really referring to is Yeshua which is Joshua in English not Jesus uh, the Greeks use the name to reference Jesus uh, or this person this entity this being as Isus which means hail Zeus which is actually uh, a Greek God uh, which uh, if you go into the Sumerian text relates to some of the Sumerian pantheon uh, and the Christ that they added to the end means Messiah or Messiah which in English translates to Messiah and that basically means a person who was a leader or the savior of a certain specific group of people so they're saying hail Zeus the savior this is what the Greeks are saying and so this is why I'm telling you that calling on the name of Jesus has no power because it's a totally fabricated name based off of uh, a person who was most likely an ancient uh, Sumerian king uh, most likely an Anunnaki king who ruled over Sumeria at some point uh, but not the person you think uh, and definitely not the person that is actually uh, Caesar Borgia which is uh, the son of a, a pope or that uh, ruled over part of uh, the world and was a brutal murderer and killer and ordered the image of Jesus to be painted in his image so again more proof what's up Thomas that uh, you guys are using the name of an entity incorrectly so when you calling on the name of Jesus Jesus help me Jesus save me what you're talking to is not what you think you're talking to you're putting a frequency and energy and vibration into the universe that's not going to provide any help and the proof of this the proof of this is there are the 89.4 percent of the world is religious every single day there are literally trillions of prayers going up and I mean trillions on a daily basis all these frequencies are being sent out by human beings into the space-time continuum on a daily basis based off of these religious beliefs and all these prayers are going up however the world is <laughs> not getting any better people more people are suffering more than ever uh, there's uh, there's death destruction homicides killings corrupt political systems nothing all these prayers have went out what happens is if 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 somebody gets into a car accident and they get them out unscathed oh it's because of Jesus no it's because it wasn't your time yet that's what it was because it wasn't because of Jesus because if it was because of Jesus how come the people there's people over uh, in our own country in the United States that are sleeping on the streets they don't deserve to have a home they don't deserve to to, to what about the person who, who uh, you drove by that just crashed in the car or did they commit too much sins and it was time they had to die because Jesus didn't have time to help them that moment you guys gotta start thinking about what you're saying it doesn't make any sense you got you gotta start really thinking about this a lot better you're trying to uh, turn this name of Jesus into some type of a your personal slave where anytime something happens you want to call out this name of this entity which is actually you don't even know what you're saying you have no idea who you're giving your energy to none a lot of people that I talked to about this when I responded to them I said well who was Yeshua then they didn't even have an answer they didn't even know that Yeshua is the same person that they're trying to reference as Jesus okay no the, the man's name is Yeshua and if you go and do further study 
because the Bible is only a partial record of a much bigger story and research the ancient Sumerian tablets, then you will discover that in the Apocrypha text, which have been held out of the Bible, Jesus went to Egypt and I went to the house where he actually lived. His name is Yeshua. He went to Egypt and he actually lived there and studied at the mystery schools, which were formulated by Thoth, the Atlantean, back in the ancient times when Egypt was actually the land of Kim. Not only did he study in the ancient Egyptian mysteries, he then left and went to India and he learned Reiki healing with his hands. He went to Tibet and studied with the monks. Okay. <laughs> he taught reincarnation. Uh, you know, so a lot of these stories you guys have been reading, it's only one book your entire life, which you were born into, and you're afraid to look at anything else. You've been fooling yourself. I'm sorry, guys. You got to get up off your butt. Go get some research. Go get the Apocrypha text. Discover why the Council of Nicaea said, we'll put this in, now we're going to take this out. We'll put this in, now we're going to keep this out. Go read the Book of Enoch. There's only one Bible in the world that still has the Book of Enoch, and that's the Ethiopian Bible. The original Jews are the Ethiopians. And there are really no other Jews other than Ethiopians. The other people are Kazakhstani Jews. Uh, they go and they, they, uh, they have the Book of Enoch still in their Bible. Find out why it's in there and read it and find out why they, do, why they don't want it in your book. They don't want it in the book you got because it talks about people coming from space and teaching them how to create things and make war and, and all this other psycho babble stuff that they do in there. Some crazy stuff, you know, um, sorcery. They call it sorcery, but really sorcery means how to create different types of technologies that they never saw before. They didn't have the words, so they call it sorcery. Uh, even how to make jewelry, all these things, how to make city grids, how to build com uh, construction, how to hide and embed it in code, knowledge into bricks and stone, which is masonry. This is what they came here and taught people. Uh, they don't want you to know that that's what it's all about. They don't want you to know about uh, the, uh, the lost book of Jesus's wife, which is an authentic document verified by scholars all over the world that 99.9% .9 of Christians don't even know exists. Yeah, he was married. <laughs> Not only was he married, he had kids. So, you know, guys, you, you've been, you've been, man, you've been fooled. You've just been, you, you've, but it's your own fault. Because why? Because you won't do any research. You will not do any research. See, the biggest thing you have to understand is words have power. Words have supreme power over the ether, over the atmosphere itself. Because when you speak, you're vocally creating what they call a frequency. Frequencies are responsible for everything we see in the third dimension. I mean everything. N matter doesn't exist without frequency and sound. That's what it means in the Bible when it says, in the beginning was the word. The word is a frequency and vibration. If you research quantum physics, you discover th string theory and M theory. Nothing can exist without vibrating strings. This is how matter jingles itself into existence. When you add the vibrating strings with a conscious observer, the combination of consciousness and the vibrating strings creates what we consider what we call the illusion of matter. Because in truth, there really is nothing out there except for waves and frequencies. We literally create our own holograms within our own mind and say, okay, this is what's going on out there. When you realize that the true Messiah and the true uh, Jesus that you've been looking for is truly inside of yourself because you are a direct connect source. Your brain is, a, is, a, is an actual... Uh, uh, a crystal uh, receiver. You have crystal magnetite in your brain, billions of them, and they connect to the base of the spine, which has uh, this group of cells which are in the formation of the flower of life. This flower of life is also a pattern that is depicted and repeated throughout nature and is the very fabric of space time itself, which is direct connected to the source that feeds this entire third dimension and creates everything we see. That creates what we call our reality, our dimension, and the source is coming from the creator, because there is a creator. Don't get twisted now. There's a creator of this realm. Now, the, the method used to create this realm may be within question, but uh, there is a creator. The science proves it. There's the, the fingerprint has been left behind. If I was a, CI, a CSA agent or CSI agent looking for the, you know, the source of the crime of the creation of this universe, I would have to go look at the evidence. All the evidence points to the Fibonacci sequence. It points to uh, phi, pi. It points to um, uh, the uh, flower of life. It points to all these archetypes and things that I can find within the structure of this realm everywhere. And because I can find those, I can then now point my finger to one source. 
that there's actually a creator of this. There's a, there's a specific design to this dimension. But behind that is word. Now, what are these words and frequencies? The, we use them every single day. But here's the thing people don't realize. Like Thoth said in the Animal Tablets, the highest knowledge is unutterable. They're using frequencies and technologies way above anything we can conceive or perceive to hold this realm together. Now, on the inside of this realm, we still have a specific amount of power and control over words and vi with using uh, use over, over the ether using words and vibration. The only thing is you don't realize is English is the most weakest form of control of this dimension that exists. If you, the deeper you go into ancient texts, when you go into the Sumerian cuneiform, when you go into uh, Arabic, when you go into the Vedic text and read the ancient Indian uh, text, um, you know, like in the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita, and these, those languages, Aramaic, those languages have much more control, much more power over this third dimension when you speak than English. English is actually one of the weakest, which is why they gave us English. They gave us English and spread it all around the world to keep us from re uh, reaching a specific level of power and control over our own destiny, over our own control. Who is they? You got to look that up. That's the elites. Who's behind the elites? The Anunnaki's behind the elites. But that's what it's all about, guys. You got to get up and you got to do some research. You got to stop going to the building and calling it your temple because your body is the temple. Everything you need is inside of here. Everything you need is inside of you. The, the, you're supposed to go out according to the text that Yeshua spoke about in the book that you're supposed to know so much about. You're supposed to go out and do greater things. You're supposed to be able to impact this planet and this world in a specific way that's going to make it better. You're not supposed to sit back, kick your feet up on the desk, watch the world burn, eat some popcorn, and go to a building every weekend, give them 10% of your money, and go say a couple of prayers, read about four or five lines of text, spend five hours on four or five lines of text. Don't decipher Deuteronomy. Don't decipher these other books that could contradict each other. Just stay in these little tiny sections, make you feel good, and go home. That's it. That's what you guys do, man. You're missing the boat. Until you break down that text and study Aramaic, study Hebrew, uh, study the, uh, the Sumerian tablets, which anybody can study the Sumerian tablets. You don't need to be a, a, a linguistic person. All you have to do is go to ucla.edu because they've done a phenomenal job in taking all the stone tablets all one million of them and translating them so you can go to the virtual library grab a stone off the shelf drop it into the virtual translator and read the real information that's supposed to be in the bible not the text that king james and the council of nicaea want you to read not the mistranslated words that they purposely by accident on purpose mistranslated for you to read not the parts that they cut out that you'll never see and the parts that you've been so taught to be so frightened of and so scared that you won't even look up because you feel, believe that if you go and dig those books up, you're going to go to hell. Which, by the way, I hate to break it to you, but hell was added to the Bible, as so was the rapture. Neither one of those two things actually even exist. Especially, I mean, the rapture, I mean, that's the most e easiest one. You can't even, it's not even a controversy. In 1835, I believe it was, William Darby uh, added it to one of the Bibles that he was printing up because he was a publisher. And it was a cliff note in the Bible. A couple of pastors realized they had a lot of power behind that and said, you know what? <laughs> we can take this and turn this into a money maker. They took it and put it inside the actual text to make it look like it was part of the doctrine. Didn't it doesn't exist. It was an individual person's cliff note that he added and then became part of the doctrine a little bit more, you know, later than that. Became another manip manipulation tool for you. There is no body coming to rapture up dead bodies and all this other crazy stuff. Doesn't exist, guys. Doesn't exist. If you're sitting around thinking, I'm just going to pay my 10% and I, I'm going to go to this church every week or two times a week and, and, and then I'm going to sit back and watch the world burn and I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get pulled up out of this dimension. You got another surprise coming. And if you're only going to church and worshiping God because you're scared to go to hell, then you're a sick individual. You're sick. You have, there's no love there. Why are you worshiping somebody for, on the basis that you don't want to be punished? See, you confuse the word love with fear. You're not, you don't, you're not loving. There's no love there. There's no love when you're in fear of getting damnation. 
That's not love. That's called fear. You're afraid, so you're going, you know what? I better do this, and I better do this, and I'm going to do just what this thing says, just in case, you know, it's all real. Like, no, you listen. And these are the same people that don't believe aliens exist. <laughs> Guys, I'd rather believe that there's people out there living in other planets than some of this fairy tale stuff that you guys are going through. Because you're, you're some of the most logical PhD, uh, uh, you know, doctor's degree people, all these highly educated people, and believe in this fantasy based off of what they've been born into. See, you were born, you were given a name, then you were given a religion, okay, and you've been given a race, and then now you go off into the world and you got to defend this fake identity for the rest of your life. That's what you're doing. You're defending a fake identity until you die, literally. And you take that as, oh my God, I was lucky enough to be born into the right religion. Out of all the 785 religions that exist, mine is the right one. No, guys, listen. It's all based on spirituality. The only thing that truly really exists is spirituality because spirituality can actually be proven. Religion is nothing but a manipulation tool to suck your brain dry, keep you in a low frequency vibration. Why do I say that? Because fear, it's already been scientifically proven in the laboratory, fear is a low frequency. It creates a low frequency in the body, which can actually be measured. And as it runs across the DNA strands, it makes a much wider cosine wave across the DNA. When you're in a position or a frequency of love, then you have a high frequency and you have a shorter cosine wave, which actually touches more of the DNA strands as the body emanates its frequency, scientifically proven. So when you're in a position or a state of spiritual love and understanding versus a, a coming from a position of fear, when you're in love, you're actually in more power. You have more control of your destiny of your, over your reality tunnel. You, are, you can actually help to co-create with where you want to go and how to help people and things like that. When you're operating from a position of fear, this is why the majority of the black communities, which is why I made the meme, are suffering worldwide. And it's always, oh, it's the end times. That's why it's like this. No, 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 no. Again, that was a no, whole nother story. That's a whole nother me live video for me to get into about top of this end time stuff, okay? We already had end time after end time. And people who think this is the worst, worst that the world has ever been, they haven't read any books. If you think that this is the worst that the world has ever been since it was created and formed and people have been here, then you're fooling yourself. You're another ignorant person. I don't care what kind of degree you got. You can flash me all kind of books and degrees and, 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 and certificates on your wall. You don't know nothing. You ain't read no books, okay? Because you don't know about the papal inquisition, okay? The popes, the Catholic Church made Hitler look like an angel, look like an angel. They killed and tortured over 80 million people on this planet, okay? Killed and tortured. I mean, when I say tortured, I'm talking about severely tortured. Some of the torturing tools, look them up. They would stick these things in people's anuses and expand them until they popped, but it would make them die for days. They would stick these things in women's vaginas and expand them and close them and expand them over many, many months. Starvation, starve people. Uh, it just the crazy, the, 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 the things that they did, 80 million people they murdered and tortured to death. 80 million. Okay, that's your one of your churches. You got the the you got the um, the Europeans that came to America and killed over 400 year uh, 280 year period 111 million indigenous Native American people. 111 again making the Europeans make Hitler that came, the ones that came here make Hitler look like an angel again because he he tortured and killed about three million. They did 111 million. We got 80 million Catholic, uh, you know, the Catholic, the, 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 the papacy, the papal inquisition. And you got 111 million right here in the North Americas, murdered, killed, tortured, raped, everything, land stolen, the whole works. I mean, so those, with just those two, and I can keep on going with tragedy after tragedy, but just with those two alone, this world is not in the worst state. It's, it's not in the, we have dark ages. You know, you ain't seen nothing until you've seen that. So what you guys are thinking is the end times and keeps coming to be the end times, keep thinking that because you're just spinning your wheels. You're just spinning your wheels and you're using a whole bunch of lazy guesswork based off of what somebody told you standing behind a wooden pulpit once a week. you done no research. Pick up a damn book. Go find out what do I need to research to back this stuff up. And don't pick up a concordance because a concordance is backing up the lies. It's based off the information that's already available. When I tell you that people that we're living in the matrix, 
They think I'm talking about the movie The Matrix. No, I'm not talking about the movie The Matrix. I'm talking about The Matrix mentioned in the Bible. The Bible tells you we're living in The Matrix. The Matrix is a womb. And you don't become a full-born child until you exit that womb and you wake up. When it, what does it mean when it says you have to exit the womb? It's talking about reaching a higher level of consciousness. When you reach a higher level of consciousness and realize that you are living in a matrix and that the only way to achieve or to see this matrix from the outside looking in and to be able to manipulate it is for you to rece receive or achieve a higher level of consciousness, then you can see the matrix for what it truly and really is. And then you have the capability to have power over that and more control over your life. That's what the Bible's talking about. The matrix is actually mentioned in the Bible about uh, maybe eight or ten times. Okay? Eight or ten times. It says you are born into the matrix. Literally, the word matrix is actually... In, look it up. I'm not talking about the movie when I'm talking about the matrix. I'm talking about the Bible. And I don't, the movie itself is not talking about ma a made-up term. They're talking about that as well. But see, everybody just blew right by them. They don't, you know why? Because they don't read nothing. <laughs> They don't study nothing. They don't research nothing. I shouldn't know more about the Bible than a person who's been studying it since they were born. I know people that are 60, 70 years old, been studying these Bibles, going to church since they were born. Since they were born, two, three times a week. Then God I mean, then gave up all this money to do all this stuff. And I, how come I know more than them about the Bible? You know why? Because I'm not just reading the Bible. I'm taking the information from the Bible and I'm researching all the history and background behind it. I'm going into the Sumerian tablets. I'm going into the cuneiform text. I'm going into the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Tell me this. Let me ask you this question. The Emerald Tablets are 36,000 plus years old. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, -H, the Atlantean priest king that ruled Egypt for 14,000 years on his own, documented. Let me ask you this. How come the words of the book that he wrote 36,000 years ago match identically the words that Jesus is speaking in the New Testament of the Bible? which is just not that old. Where did Jesus get those words from? Is he copying the words of Thoth out of the Emerald Tablets and just re-speaking them to the people? Or is he Thoth? Or is he the son of Thoth? Because, you know, he's a product of a virgin birth, according to these records. And that, what does that mean? It doesn't mean, ma it doesn't mean a sky daddy with a magic wand uh, made a baby pop out of somebody. Because if you read the Apocrypha text, you discover that Mary's mother was also a virgin birth. Oh, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you didn't know that his Jesus' grandmother or Yeshua's grandmother was a virgin birth. You see, there's a specific bloodline that the Anunnaki has established on this planet. And these are people with highly advanced technology. Much more advanced than we still have to this current day. And the proof of it is all around this globe. All the megalithic structures that we cannot du duplicate, we cannot even create, we can't move them. The pyramids and all these Baalbek megalithic stones uh, everywhere from Easter Island to Peru. They're all over the place. The evidence has been left all around us, but still we keep our eyes closed and put our heads in the sand. Okay? These people were superiorly advanced in us, and they used artificial insemination. They used artificial insemination uh, many times, according to the ancient Sumerian tablets. And Jesus is probably most likely a product of an artificial insemination because they wanted a specific bloodline for a specific reason, as well as his grandmother, who then gave birth then to, uh, to Mary, and now you have... Yeshua, who's all in that same bloodline. There's reasons for all of this. There's a reason why every president of the United States is related. There's a reason why there's only one president of the United States is not related is Van Buren, but there's a reason why they're all related to John Lackman uh, from the Plaginet bloodline, which can be traced directly back to the Merovingians, who are Jesus' bloodline, who can be traced back to the Arabian kings, the Sumerian kings, the Egyptian pharaohs, all the way back to the Sumerian kings list, which is in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, England. How come you don't know that? But you've been born into this religion and you've been going through it your whole life every single day, going to church, praying, Jesus, Jesus, help me, help. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm blessed because I got this house. Meanwhile, there's a thousand people right around the corner on Broward Boulevard sleeping on the, on the street. But they're not blessed either. But no, your God is supposed to love everybody. See, what you've missed and what you don't understand is God is you and you are God. We are the part of the creation, the essence of the actual universe, this fluid that we're floating and moving around in that we call the ether is part of us and we're part of it. The actual creator or creators of this dimension are on the outside. This is a program. We're living in a, we've taken, somebody has taken a pebble and dropped it into a pool and the ripples have gone out. We're living in the ripples. Okay, we're living in the ripples. There's nobody that's gonna come down with a magic wand and save you from a situation. 
There's nobody that's going to come down with a magic wand and say, you know what? This person deserves a brand new car. Give it to them so they can praise us. Come on, man. Are you got... <laughs> when are you guys going to wake up? Please wake up because you're smoking something. You're taking them that book and you're rolling it up and smoking it. Okay? You don't understand what, what's really going on here. You got to study a multitude of things to understand what's in that book. If you're just relying on listening to somebody yell and scream all these stuff things behind a pulpit, collect your money every week, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. And then you go, oh, the beast is coming. Then the beast is already here. I made a post about that. The beast is already here. As soon as you give your 10% to that control system on Sunday, you leave right out of there that same second, hop in your car, and y'all all go to all go to a restaurant because religious people love to eat. Boy, they love to eat. They love to eat them slaughtered animals. All that tortured flesh and all them tortured animals that went through all that torture, they love to dig right on into that. As soon as they get out of there, the first thing they do is go is go take some satisfaction in an animal that's been tortured its entire life and killed and murdered just so they could put it in their stomach and get satisfaction out of it. And then what they're, what they're doing right there is they're giving their money to the beast. Then they're going to go to the grocery store and they're going to buy all, you know, all these products with all these chemicals in it. I got to as well. You're giving your money. We're all doing it. We're giving our money to the beast. The beast is already here. You guys are waiting for this beast. We're living. The beasts are the elites, the 1% that control this planet that you guys are just kissing ass and take, going and voting and all this. How are you going to be a Christian person believing all this stuff? This again, this is not understanding. And then go vote. What are you voting for? What are you voting for? Why are you partic participating in the beast system? That is the mark that you've been talking about. You guys aren't, you still haven't gotten it. Y'all still haven't gotten it, man. Y'all are so far off, it ain't even funny. Okay? It, it's not even funny. You, you, you don't understand the fundamental basis of what you've been taught your entire life is all fake and wrong. And the biggest thing that everybody, as soon as I bring up the Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, to people, they want to run because they don't want to have to explain it. The book of Deuteronomy is one of the most brutal books that exist in the Bible where God himself speaks to people, but when you understand there's not really God speaking, then you can understand what's going on, and telling people who have to go across the land to people that they've never met before, kill them, kill the people over there, kill the women, kill the children, rape women, take whoever you rape as your wife if you want them to, kill the animals, and take the spoils. Keep the spoils. These are kings that were called gods back then but see in the regular bible they forgot to do something they forgot to accidentally on purpose add the s because when you go into the original text you discover it's gods with an s not that not not god with a singular like they have in deuteronomy these are actual relatives that were stationed around the planet and around different regions that were fighting each other using humans as cattle to obtain more land and resources just like they do today when they go these soldiers psych them up, get them all pumped up, bring them on board, send them all the way halfway around the world to kill people so that these corporate suits can make all this money. You guys aren't getting it. You guys aren't getting it. How can you even be, if you really understood the Bible, you'd never be a soldier. You'd never be a soldier. Never, not in a million years. If you're saying you're a Christian and you're a soldier, you tr you, you, you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. And am I saying we don't need soldiers? No. We need to protect our homeland, we need to protect ourselves. But what's been going on for the last thousand years or more? All this, send these people out to go kill people and take over their land under these fake premises? That is foolishness. And you've been hoodwinked and you've been tricked and fooled and you've been suckered. And then you wanna go and say a prayer and think that's gonna help and save you. Not gonna save you, not gonna help you at all, okay? Karma, don't care who you are, don't care what you are, the karmic, the karmic uh, energy will catch back up to you eventually in some way shape fashion or form it will come it will come back and just like when jesus talked about re reincarnation in the apocrypha text but you say you're too scared to look at that you'll find out that when you don't learn your lesson your energy will be right back here in the same exact place <laughs> you'll be here you won't ascend you won't reach a higher a higher dimension you won't make it to a higher realm because the essence the the, the actual light being that inhabits your body doesn't even exist here your frequency is being beamed into this dimension from an outside source. And then your avatar, your avatar, this biological machine actually has a crystal receiver in it that actually temporarily locks in that light entity, your photon into this body and locks you and traps you temporarily, not temporarily, 
but temporally, meaning time, locks you into this dimension. Now you're in this dimension and you're operating, you're actually animating this avatar. You cannot, your body can't do anything without the photon that enters it in an angle. The photon comes in as an angle of light and happens this body. You can't do anything. You can't move, you can't talk, you can't move your arms, you can't do anything until when? Until that photon actually, until that spark occurs when that actual spirit enters into this body and actually animates it. Scientific study done, major universities, they took people, put them in dark rooms, separate from each other. They put a screen in front of them, put pictures on the screens. The pictures were timed to, to show a new image every 10 to 15 seconds, randomly. The images were random, okay? Now, these in images that they were showing were actually serene images of sunsets and families loving each other. Then they'd interject a murder scene or somebody getting stabbed or some kind of brutal attack. And then they'd interject more calm flowers, roses, and they hooked up electrodes to the study, the, the brain of the people that were in the study to read the brain reaction to these images. Something incredible happened. Something really incredible happened. You want to know what happened? They discovered that up to seven seconds before the image was even shown, up to seven seconds before the image was shown on the screen, the brain was already saying to the computer what was going to show up. Study. This is look it up. This is a real study, scientifically controlled study. It has been replicated in science uh, science uh, um, labs all across the world. So that means that up to seven seconds before they were reading, they were telling that the person was was seeing the next image was going to be a horrific scene, car accident, a murder, whatever. Up to seven seconds. What does that tell you? That means that we're in a delayed reality, and the information is coming in from the outside in. We're, our, 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 our brain is receiving a wave, a signal, information, con, uh, uh, a confirmation of what's, what's potentially going to happen has already happened. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you guys is what you're thinking is reality, what you're considering or saying this is true, this is real, it's all an illusion. Because in true reality, when you really understand what's happening in this dimension, how it's created and who really created it, you'll, find, you'll figure out that we truly are living in a holographic uh, universe. It doesn't mean that you're a fake person. It doesn't mean that things don't exist. But we're immersed in the hologram. We are in the creation. What do you think we're created with? This this entire universe is created from light. Anything that you consider to be a, a, a piece of matter in this realm, in this dimension, can be broken down into its smallest bit, which becomes a light particle. It emits light. We're talking. We're living in a light matrix. Literally, living in a in a light matrix. One thousand percent accurate. J Dr. Uh, uh, James S. Gates Jr., a uh, theoretical physicist at the University of Maryland and also a master of supersymmetry on the planet, was a scientific advisor to the President of the United States at one point when Obama was in office, discovered these things called adinkras, which the ancient Dogon tribe in Mali, Africa, already knew about and had already been talking about for thousands of years. These adinkras are these these geomorphic shapes that actually are encoded with numbers and information. Well, he discovered that the actual ether of the universe itself, what we consider to be free space around us, is made up of a code. But not just any kind of code. These adinkra codes are specific type of codes. They're the same exact codes that control internet search engines and browsers. Think about that for a minute. This is a scientific fact, not fiction. So we're living in a created matrix that is run by the same software that controls internet browsers and search engines. The people who created the Sims video game, which is like this realistic video game of people walking around and talking, having relationships and having kids and going to parties and so forth, the Sims, S-I-M-S, I guess short for simulations, are saying that within the next 20 years, these Sims will be conscious. We ourselves have now created our own uh, ancestor universe with conscious entities in it. Will it be that they in the next 20, 30, 40, 100 years will be saying to themselves, be asking themselves these same questions, are we real? Are we living in a hologram? Who created this realm? And yet we are the gods of that dimension. We are the gods of the video game world. These, these video games are so realistic now, they're saying within the next 20 years, there'll be conscious beings inside the video games. The proof more that we now are living ourselves in an ancestor created simulation okay it doesn't take anything away from god entity or conscious en energy which is 
very spiritual by nature. It just means that this is the method being used to create what we call reality. And when you finally figure this out and understand it, and that you're tied directly and intuitively, you're, you're merged and, and, and right within it, and the energy that's coming out of you is the energy that's out there, and the energy out there is the energy in you, then you can understand and see exactly what I'm talking about. But you can't get to this level of understanding until you get up off your butt and research some more material and get a better understanding of what is a holographic universe. Read The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. What is the Sumerian Tablet? What are the Sumerian Tablets? Look them up. Find them. Research them. What are, what are the Emerald Tablets of Thoth? How do they relate to the Bible? How come Jesus is saying the same exact words that Thoth was saying 36, 40,000 years ago? Why are they matching up? What's going on here? How come the real truth, the full story of Noah's uh, Ark, the, the book of Noah, uh, uh, is, is the story of Noah, I mean, is in the Epic of Gilgamesh? Who is this character? What was he about? Why is this the same exact story, but with much more information and content? And why does it predate this story by thousands of years? Then you begin to see that a lot of these other stories that you've been studying your whole life are just tiny plagiarized pieces, and, and most of them just chopped up, of a full, much more full story. What, are the, what is the Mahabharata? What, are the, what is the Bhagavad Gita? What are these texts? Why do these texts show flight manuals and flight plans? Why do they show, give instructions on how to create advanced nuclear weapons? Why do they show uh, how to create actual anti-gravital crafts that can fly above the land or silently? Why do, they, why do they give the flight manual for the pilot on how to fly these machines? And they're 20,000 years old, 27,000 years old. Why? Why? How, how, you don't, nobody wants to ask these questions. Why? Because you want to go ahead and put your head in the sand and go, I just want to do my 10% a week to this system and I want to sit back and watch the world burn and then hopefully when I die, I'll make it to this magical place called heaven and I won't go to hell because I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid of hell. You see? You've been fooled, man. You've been fooled at the highest level. Yeah. You've been fooled at the highest level level okay guys i gotta sign off i don't want to go too long i've been on here for a while i hope you got an understanding of what i'm talking about yes i do believe in a higher power yes i do believe in higher levels of consciousness yes i do believe that yeshua actually did walk walk this earth because the evidence uh, of him in my personal opinion it, it matches up with thoth the atlantean and i think that he was either thoth himself or a student of thoth or, 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 or you know or maybe a son of thoth that's my personal opinion but again, it's up to you to do your own research, your own investigation. All right? I love you guys, man. I'll catch y'all.